We all know that the retro look is coming back. So today, let's look at a keyboard that has a retro look with some modern touches. So Royal Clutch sent me over their RKM87. This is a retro inspired keyboard that has two knobs and a screen. It also has dedicated media keys and I'm kind of interested to see how it turns out. So as we dive into the box, the first thing we're met with is your instruction manual. This gives you all your hotkey information, how to connect it via Bluetooth, wireless or wired. Next up, you have your USB-C cable. This is kind of unique because it's USB-C to USB-C, although it does come with an adapter, so you don't have to worry about having a dedicated USB-C port on your computer, which is cool. Next up, you also have your keycap and switch puller. This is an integrated kind, so you know, one tool on each side. Next, you have five extra switches. These are RK creams, uh, which we'll talk about a bit later. Also in that bag, you have this really cool pry tool. This is something that I wish more keyboards would come with. Having a pry tool is amazing, especially for modding. This comes in so clutch and I wish everybody would use this. Like seriously, other keyboard manufacturers, get on this. Please send me pry tools. I use them so much. It's, it's so handy, seriously. And that brings us to the star of the show. This is the RK M87. You can see we have our dedicated media keys. We also have two knobs, not just one, but two, count them. There's also a small screen here. And overall, you can definitely see that it's got this retro looking vibe. It's got the, the classic cream on red, a little bit of black accents. Also, it's a little bit of touch of the bronzish gold. Overall, the package really fits the retro vibe. The aesthetic is definitely there. Now, the styling choices, there's some that I'm not a huge fan of. I don't really like the Royal Kludge being right at the top. I'm not a big fan of like the big in-your-face names on the front of my keyboard or top of my keyboard. But it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look out of place, which I do like. I like that the package feels like a package. If we flip the keyboard over, it also continues onto the back. We have this really nice matte red. We have these cool like fin design on the back. They're not functional, but they are a design choice. The badge for the company branding is right in the center. It's very minimal. I do like that. We have dual stage flip up feet, tons of rubber pads, so it's not gonna slide around your desk, which I do definitely like. The feet are really solid when you flip them up into place, so I don't think they're gonna collapse if you, you know, push your keyboard or anything like that. As you can see here, we're gonna flip one up and then literally you can move the entire keyboard without it collapsing. That's a really nice touch. I don't like when they collapse so easy that every time I move my keyboard, my keyboard collapses. Not cool. If we flip it over the back or the top here, you can see that we have our wireless dongle for our 2.4. There's a dedicated slot for storage. There's also a pass-through USB slot and then your USB-C slot. This is really nice touches. I do like pass-throughs on my keyboards. They're really convenient. I don't always use them, but they're really great for a lot of stuff, like if you're using thumb drives and stuff like that. But overall, it's really minimal. I like it. It's out of the way. That's a win in my book. Now, for styling and feel out of the box, honestly, the keyboard feels crazy. It's not light. It's got a lot of heft to it. It feels solid. It doesn't really bend or warp when I'm trying to bend it. Like, it's really, really premium feeling. It's like a solid keyboard. It's, it's got heft. Now, with that heft, I was kind of surprised to discover that it's got a nice flex to it. Now, it shouldn't be too surprising because it is gasket mounted, so it does have the capabilities of having flex, but we don't always see that in these styles of keyboards. There's been many keyboards that were gasket mounted that doesn't have this much flex in it. Now, I don't think it's too much because me personally, I'm not a huge fan of too much flex in my keyboards, but this definitely feels like the right amount. It gives me a really good typing experience. It's got nice bounce and I really like it. So now that we've unboxed it and we've looked at it, let's go ahead and start taking it apart and see what we're working with. Starting with keycaps. These are Cherry Profile PBT keycaps and they're kind of just normal keycaps. They're nothing to write home about as they're not the best keycaps in the world, but I would like to note that they're not terrible. The colors go edge to edge. I don't see any chips or defects or warping and the finish is pretty nice. They're not glossy after use and they feel pretty good. So. Not bad. 
Next up, let's look at our switches. These are RK Creams. They are a 45 gram linear switch. They are five pin and they come pre-looped. And let me tell you right out of the box, they're definitely pre-looped. They feel really smooth. I don't feel any scratchiness. They feel good to type on. And honestly, that's a win. These switches honestly surprised me. So we have our switch out. Let's go in and take a look at our sockets. This is our five pin hot swap sockets. You can see that it's south facing RGB. Support for the three pin or five pin. So if you have old three pin switches laying around, they'll totally work. But yeah, you can also see that we appears that we have some foam here and maybe a switch pad, uh, which we'll have to take a look as soon as we get everything disassembled, which is our next step. So we get all our switches out, all our keycaps off. Don't forget our knobs because we have learned that they will fly across the room if you don't take your knobs off. Next is your media keys. These don't come out. I learned. They don't come out, so don't try. We also take a look at our stabilizers. We can see from here that they are lubed, so that's a really cool touch. And we can also verify what kind of plate we're using, which, spoiler alert, it's polycarbonate, and it has flex cuts. But that aside, we need to get into the keyboard itself, and that's where our pry tool comes in handy. But be warned, before you ever open a keyboard, the first thing you need to do is always check for screws. I get tons of messages about people breaking keyboards, and that's because they didn't look for screws first when opening their boards. I try to always highlight how to get into a keyboard on this channel, so if you ever have any questions, see if I've done a video beforehand or somebody's done a disassembly video beforehand so you don't break a keyboard. So we check our flip up feet, we check behind the rubber pads, things like that. That's usually where they hide screws if they're not in plain sight. Once we verify that this keyboard in fact doesn't have any screws there, we need to go ahead and use our pry tool to get into it. A big shout out for Royal Kludge to actually including a pry tool. It, it literally is a game changer. It seems so simple, but honestly, it's a game changer. As you can see here, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm just pulling slightly up and, a, and, and towards me. This will separate the clips and allow us to get started with our pry tool. Once you have a little bit of separation, it's really easy to get the pry tool in and all you need to do is slide around the edges. This part, just take it slow and simple. If you don't get the clip to pop the first time, just run the pry tool back and forth a few times and trust me, it will open up. As you can see here around the corner, we struggle a little bit. So we're just gonna make a few passes until it pops. So I'm gonna speed up the footage of me trying it, a couple passes and bam, all the clips pop, no problem. Now you might destroy a pry tool in this, it happens. But once you're in, you're golden. Now, when you have your case actually opened up, don't be too hasty about this part. Make sure you go slow and tilt it away from you so that way you don't sever any of the ribbon cables. This is really important because if you sever these cables, your board's toast. Once you get to this part, all you do to get these ribbon cables out, you'll take a small tool and you'll just flip back the flap that holds the ribbon cable in and then they'll slide right out. No problems at all. Just go slow and steady and you'll be all good. Once you have that off, you can actually see that the screen, knobs, and the media key controllers all stay with the top plate. So that's all good. We can set that aside and we can focus on diving to the rest of the board. At this point, we now have access to our plate and our PCB, but we don't want to flip it towards us or away from us. The first thing we're going to do is slightly lift up and see where our ribbon cable is. Here you can see the board actually flips towards us so that we have room for our ribbon cable. With this, it'll be the same approach. You can grab a small tool or your fingernail and just open up the clasp and the ribbon cable will come out. No problems. Also, apologize for being off frame. Sometimes I'm bad at filming. That's, that's a me. I need to work on that. But once you have all the ribbon cables out and disconnected, now you're free to do with what you will. You can see here we have our PCB. It is this nice, really cool lavender color with the purple accents. You can see that we have our hot swap sockets. Also, surprisingly, there's no like tape mod or anything like that from factory. I know we do tape mods ourselves, but usually there's like a backing rubber or foam that they use. And we actually don't see that here, which kind of caught me off guard. We do have a small layer of foam here, and then we have a silicone pad at the bottom. The silicone pads are getting more and more common. 
They've been in almost every keyboard I reviewed for the past month. Now, I'm not 100% sure or sold on them yet. They do help the overall sound and feel and the weight of the keyboard, but I still just don't know. I, I There's some that I like and some that I don't. I would like to know your thoughts. Do you like the silicone? Do you think they should substitute it with something else? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to have a discussion about if this is a great thing or if there's something else that they could better use. Anyway, we set that aside. Now we have access to everything in the bottom of the case. We have our daughter board along with our giant batteries. These are 7,500 total milliamp hour batteries that have a reported time of 400 hours of working time, which is crazy. 400 hours of battery life. Like that's a lot of battery life. Also, still with it being completely torn down, it still has hardly any flex and I'm really bending this thing. That's crazy. So now that we've seen everything out of the keyboard and how to take it apart, let's go ahead and get everything back together and being completely stock with no mods, we'll get all the software installed, get the keyboard set up, and then we'll hear how it sounds. All right, once we have it connected, we're gonna head over to arcadegaming.com. We'll click on software. We'll go down to the M87 and we're gonna go download the software. Once you have the software downloaded and installed, then you'll see the M87 as a connected device. If you click on it, it'll take you to the profile page. This is where you set up your default profiles. So here you can assign any different key combinations or functions. So if we wanna take the one key and make it an A, we simply assign it. If you want to put it back to default or change it, you can simply right click and set it back to default. This is a super simple option. You can also assign your macros here. So if you say already recorded a macro, you can simply just assign it here. I really wish more companies would have good software. I prefer to use VIA, but if I have to sacrifice using VIA, I really want easy to use software like this. And I find this one among a lot, pretty easy to use. Additionally, if you wanna have multiple profiles, delete profiles or change them, you can also do that here as well. Your next menu will be your macro manager. This is where you record any new macros. If you wanna delete them or export or import already created ones, you can do that here. Next will be your default lighting for your RGB effects. You can scroll through. They update on the fly automatically so you can see what they look like on your keyboard. You can change the brightness, you can change the speed, the duration, the colors, anything like that is possible here. As you know, I'm not the biggest RGB guy. I don't use a lot of RGB on my keyboards, but I do like that I have so many different functionalities that I can edit and change. It makes it really nice to use, especially for the people that really utilize it. If I don't like the default ones, I can also record my own lighting, which is kind of neat. Again, you'll have to play around with this on your own since I don't really use RGB a lot. But if you do want to change it, this is where you'll do it. Next will be your screen. And this is probably the most important one, at least for a lot of people. This does support loading custom GIFs or your own GIFs in. You'll simply select load, select the GIF that you have. The next screen will be your resizing screen. Once you have it aligned in the box to your best abilities or what you're happy with, then you're kind of ready to go. You can see all the frames at the bottom. So if you want to scroll through and see, make sure all your frames are importing good, you can do that here as well. Last note, you have a right and left option up here in case you need to change the orientation. But once we're happy with it, you'll just select OK, and then you'll see it in the preview pane. Here, you can also scroll through all of your frames if you want. You can add layers. You can save this as your custom layout, anything like that. Once you're done with it, you'll simply hit apply and then wait for it to load to the keyboard itself. Do note, this does take a minute. Depending on how many frames there are, it will take longer. The more frames, the longer the time frame. So we're going to go ahead and skip forward and get this all loaded and I'll show you what it looks like. And here it is. This is our custom New Year's gift that we loaded on our keyboard. And honestly, it looks pretty good. I expect it to be a tad bit brighter, but it doesn't look bad. This is also under a bunch of studio lighting, so let's go ahead and shut them off and see what we're working with. Here, you can see that it's pretty darn clear. It says Happy New Year's, and you'll see the fireworks in the back. 
This GIF is running a bit slower, but this was actually how it came. And then if we'll scroll through the modes, then we can see that the color vibrance is definitely there. So it just must be the GIF that I selected. Going through the options, you control the options with the left knob. I think this is a really handy navigation tool. I think the keyboard looks cool with two knobs, but also the fact that you navigate with the knob makes it really easy to adjust things, whether you're slowing down speeds, turning up speeds, turning down brightness or turning up brightness, it makes it a really easy navigation option. Simply click in to select, make your changes, and you're good to go. I really like that. So now that we've seen our screen, we've taken a look at the software, we've disassembled the keyboard, the last thing we need to do is hear how it sounds. So let's do that. So, that was a look at the RKM87. What do we think of it? Honestly, I really do like it. There's a lot to love. The keyboard feels really good out of the box. It feels sturdy, it doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't bend, it doesn't feel bad, it has a lot of heft. It's got a really nice flex when you're typing. It sounds great. It's got a really cool aesthetic that if you have a desk vibe or a setup that's retro looking, this would fit wonderfully. The two knobs are definitely a talking piece. They look cool and they function really well. The MIDI keys aren't my favorite, but I did use them and they were convenient. I don't like the branding at the top. I don't like that on any keyboard. And at a $100 price point, it opens up a lot of options for a lot of great keyboards. So that's a thing that you're gonna have to figure out. If you think the aesthetic is worth it, the keyboard is really great. But you also compete with a lot of other things like the Bridge 75 and the Rainies. So let me know what you think down below. And if you made it this far, if you could drop a like and hit subscribe, it would mean the world to me. If you do want to check out the keyboard, it'll be featured in the product description below. That's the end. Thank you for watching and keep keyboarding.